you have just fit in where you can.
The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him. Praise him. to worship I was glad but they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord our feet shall stand within thy gates O Jerusalem because of the house of the Lord our God I will seek thy good O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us do so by joining the choir this morning as they bring forth praises to our God.
Amen. At this time, we have Jaden for our prayer and Micah for our scripture reading. May you please close your eyes and bow your heads. I pray that you wake us up again this morning, and thank you for waking us up this morning. And I pray that we have a good church service this, this evening. And I pray that you cover everybody in the church on your blood. And that everybody here will praise you for everything that you did for us. And thank you for letting your son die on the cross for us. And thank you for letting us wake up and go to church this morning. And thank you for everything that you've done for us. And I just want to thank you for everything that you've done for us. In God's name we pray, amen. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. Oh. I'll be reading Luke chapter 9, 51, cha verses 51 through 62. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make him, to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to, the, to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord. But let me first say, Farewell to those at my home, Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. God's word for God's people. Thank, Thank you, God. God. It is my pleasure to introduce someone who would not introduce himself. I was debating on how to introduce him based upon our conversations that we've had. And yesterday evening I received a email from Reverend Burke who when he spoke in Kalamazoo for his great nephew who passes AMB Church. And the article speaks to his accomplishments Graduate University of Michigan All-American. First round draft choice of the New York Knicks, 1971. All-star. 
champion. But I begin to not read the article, but to read the man himself. And as I began to read the man as he entered our church, he never spoke to his accomplishments. As a matter of fact, we'd have never known if the musician had not recognized him and asked, are you? And he says, yes, I am. And so I began to contemplate what is he telling us with his life? And I, the Lord led me to Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. And here's what Paul says, and in my opinion, relates to Elder Russ as well. But what things were gained to me, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and counted them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but from that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering and be conformed to his death if by any means I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. And he counted all loss for the kingdom of God. He recognized that all that God has bestowed upon him is to use God's gift for God's glory. And so I thank God for his presence. I thank God for his fellowship. I thank God for his spirit of discernment. I just thank God for the man himself. Amen. Because I said to him, if I had accomplished what you have accomplished, I would still be wearing my jersey today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But that isn't who he is. He's about one thing, that is serving the Lord. So the next voice you will hear after the, the next selection will be that of one God has anointed greatly for such a time as this. First round draft pick in the kingdom of his God.
let me just say to all of the young people, I started right where you started. All right. Amen. In the choir. All right. Amen. So you're in a good place. Stay, no matter what anybody else says, you're in a good place. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, and I am, I am the clay. Hold me and make me. Oh, after thy will, while I am waiting, Lord, I'm yielded, I'm yielded and, and still. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold all my being, absolute sway. Filled with thy spirit, till all shall see Christ only always living. Thank you for living. In me. Let us pray, eternal and gracious God, our Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and the giver of every good and perfect gift. Incline thine ear to us this morning as we come before thy presence with attitudes of gratitude and hearts of thanksgiving. Thanking you for another day. For this is the day that you have made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. I'm rejoicing because you have granted me another chance to proclaim and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so as I embark upon thy word to these thy people, open their hearts that they might receive their ears that they might hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. And then I ask if you would allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be found acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Amen. We certainly do give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ and to the angel of this house, Pastor Rashad, to all of our clergy or pastors that may be in the house, to First Lady Sister Sherrod, to all of our officers and to all of our mothers, and to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we are certainly grateful for the opportunity to come and share the word. Right. Now, I need to get word to Superintendent Poole through Brother Lewis or through Brother Henson, that we've got to stay on our toes and be vigilant because Pastor walked up to me about three or four Sundays ago and Balin told me that I had four Sundays. <laughs> so you gotta, you gotta watch him, Ref. You gotta keep your eye on him. But we are grateful to be with you this morning and we thank God for the opportunity to come and share the word with you. And there is a word taken from the gospel as recorded by John, a familiar passage of scripture that you no doubt can recite verbatim, John 3.16, where you will find these words written. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him can, can we all say in him? Amen. That you should not perish but have 
everlasting life. And as I, as, I, as I began to read that passage of scripture, my, 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 my curiosity got the best of me, Coach Moe, and I wanted to know what the Message Bible had to say about this same passage of scripture. And it says this, this is how much God loved the world, that he gave his son, his one and only son, and this is why, so that no one need be destroyed. So by believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. Amen? So I would ask this morning if you would allow me to dialogue with you just for a few minutes this morning. Now note I said dialogue. <clears throat> I didn't say monologue. See, if I monologue, that means I do all the talking. But if I dialogue with you this morning... There ought to be a conversation between you and I. Amen. So let me, let me dialogue with you just for a few minutes from this subject. Take the sun. Take the sun. So when I began to deliberate about a message, and I recall a few weeks ago that your missionary speaker said when you told her she was preaching, she said, she inquired of the Lord. It's good to inquire of the Lord. And so when I inquired of the Lord, I, I asked, I said, how would you have me to deliver this message? What, what would you have me say to this congregation? And I was led to say, you can open up by informing young, middle-aged seniors that everyone needs to have the opportunity to hear about the Son. All right. Amen. Amen. I was led to do that. Everyone. Second, remind those that have the Son. Right. Those that have been born again. Yeah. Hold fast to what you got. Yeah. You're, you're, you're running well, Pastor. Right. Don't let anybody prevent you from obeying the truth right. that whom the Son has set free. <laughs> He's free indeed. And thirdly, stand up. Don't, don't, don't be afraid. Stand up and shout out to all. Warn all. Take the sun. Take the sun. Let me say that I was moved when the Lord pointed me in this direction. Take the sun. Don't allow anybody to prevent you from taking the sun. So when I looked at this familiar passage of scripture, it seemed crystal clear to me that God has laid out his plan of salvation for you and I. And he's telling us in this text that if you if you take the sun, if, if, if you believe in the sun, yes, and, 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 and if you take the sun, it's like a condition. Right. It's like if any man be in Christ, right. yeah. he's a new creature. Yes, but now if you want to be new, you got to be in Christ. Right. Amen? Amen? He's a new creature. So if you believe in the sun, you shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, John 3.16 has been labeled by some as a number of hope. Right. When you inquire of the Lord and he makes it clear the direction that he wants you to go, he has a way of dropping hints of confirmation. <laughs> I, I drove down the street the other day and I've seen this billboard pass a thousand times. But this one day, this billboard jumped out at me, and the scripture was John 3.16. <laughs> Number of hope. Some have even labeled this passage of scripture as the North Star of the Bible. <laughs> Some have proclaimed it as a Mount Everett of scripture. While others have subscribed it as the very foundation of their faith. 
And if you would allow me to add my two cents to this, I, I, it seemed to me that it is a promise that bears hope for the hopeless. For without hope, anybody in here ever heard of hope? I can't speak for you, but my hope huh, is built. So you see, you see, w w without hope, fear of no future, fear of death, it can be overwhelming. For it is appointed for man to die once. But with faith and hope in the sun, death merely becomes a vehicle which moves you and I from time into eternity. Take the sun. So, so, so in this text, this, this familiar passage of scripture, John 3.16, it assures us that we have been promised life after death. So as I continued the, the exegesis of this text, I kept doing my spade work. And John, the beloved, you, you, you remember John, the beloved, the writer and the speaker of our text. John is trying to convey to us in this familiar passage of scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And I came to realize that what John is really saying is, for love, so love the world. <laughs> because God is love. And he that loveth not, knoweth not God. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. Did not Jesus say to his disciples, by this shall all men know that you belong to me, if you love one another. Now, <clears throat> Mother Brian, I, I, I need a little prayer because I'm a, a little troubled when I see the envy and jealous and the dislike in a lot of churches. And I don't understand, I, it's hard for me to grasp this because they, as believers say, they love God whom they have never seen and hate their brother whom they see all the time. <laughs> The Bible has a scripture for that kind of spirit. 1 John 4 and 20 says this. You don't have to take my word. Listen at this. It says, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, the word says he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother or whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has seen? Never seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm meddling. I'm meddling a little bit in your business because bitter and sweet water can't come from the same fountain. Let me let me get back to my message before I get in trouble. So in this text, in this familiar text, John is saying that love so loved the world. In this was manifested how God showed his love toward us that he sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Can I ask if you will pay close attention to the word so love? God didn't just love us. Ooh, good God, but he so loved us. And the word so emphasizes the intensity or greatness of his love for us. I'm not talking about some weekend love or some run-of-the-mill love. I'm not even talking about phileo love, brotherly love. But the love that I want you to hear from me is agape love. Unconditional love. No strings attached. In spite of, regardless of, even when we were not lovable, he still loved us. While we were yet enemies of his, he died for us. Didn't he do it? That's the kind of God we serve. <laughs> Love in spite of. Look beyond our faults and saw our needs. 
Anybody here this morning glad that he looked beyond your faults? <laughs> Don't fool me now. So God so loved the world that he gave all that he had and, 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 and this great truth that motivated God's plan of salvation drew from him the greatest gift, the gift itself. Amen. His only begotten son. And this is how God showed his love for us and is saying to us, Take the son. Take the son. All right. And so as I move to a close, I'm reminded of a story of a wealthy father and his son. Pastor, they love to collect rare works of art. And they spend time together. And in their great collection of arts, they had it all. They had the Picasso, all right. the Rembrandts, <laughs> the Van Goghs. All right. And they would sit together and admire these great works of art. Right. And when the Iraq war broke out, the son went off to war. He was a very courageous man and died in battle while rescuing another soldier. <clears throat> the father was notified and he grieved deeply over his son's death. But, a, but about a month later, just before Christmas, there was a knock at the door. <clears throat> and the father goes to the door and there stood a young man with a large package had it in his hands and he said, sir, you don't know me, but I'm the soldier for whom your son gave his life for. Said he saved many lives that day and he was carrying me to safety when a bullet struck him in the heart and he died instantly. Your son, your son, and talked about you <laughs> and your love for the arts. The young man held out the package and said, I, I, I know this isn't much, and I'm not really an artist, but I think your son would have wanted you to have this portrait. All right. All right. <clears throat> the father opened the package, and it was a portrait of the son, yes. painted by the young soldier. Father stared in awe at the way the young man had captured the personality of the son in the painting. All right. All right. <laughs> the father was, was so drawn to the eyes of his son that his own eyes welled up in tears. So he thanked the young soldier, and he offered to pay him substantially for his thoughtful portrait of his son. Amen. Young soldier looked at the father and replied, no sir, you could never repay me for what your son did for me. This is a gift. This is a gift. So the father has to proudly hung the portrait of his son over the mantle, and every time visitors would come to the house, he would take them to see the portrait of his son before he showed them the Picassos or the Rembrandts and the Van Goghs. Good. Great works of art. Few months later, the father died. And there was to be a great auction of all the great works of art. <laughs> you know, they got excited about the Van Goghs and, and the Rembrandts. And many dignitaries and influential folk 
gathered in anticipation of seeing these great works of art and maybe the possibility of maybe buying one or two. And on the platform set the painting of the sun. The auctioneer pounded the gavel. We'll start this auction off with the bid for the sun. Who will give me a bid for the sun? Who will uh, take the sun? And there was silence that came from the back of the room. We don't want to see the sun. Get on with the real art. We didn't come to see the sun. We came to see the Picasso and the Van Gogh. Skip, skip, skip this painting. But the auctioneer kept his focus. Pounded the gavel again, asking, can I get a bid for the sun? Yes, sir. Who will give me a, a bid for the sun? The auctioneer was interrupted again by another voice. It shouted angrily, we didn't come to see the sun. Come on, man, get on with the real bids. But the auctioneer was persistent. See, I, I, I like the auctioneer. Because he held fast to his instructions. He, he, he was running well. Pounded the gavel again, saying, can I get a bid for the sun? Who will give me a, a bid for the sun? Finally, a voice came from the side of the room. It was the longtime gardener of the father and the son. Gardener shouted out, uh, I'll give you $50 for the son. Auctioneer found the gavel, I got 50, can I get 100? I got 50 right now, but I want to move up to 100. Who wants to give me a hundred uh, for the sun? The crowd was becoming angry. Sometimes you gotta be careful of the crowd you hang in. Because one week they'll say Hosanna, <laughs> and the next week they'll say crucify. Be careful of the crowd you hang around. They yelled out, we don't want the sun. What are you waiting for? Get rid of all of this and let's get on with the real bid. Right. Auctioneer said, that I got 50, can I get 100? If I don't get it, I'm gonna sell it right now for $50. Going once, going twice. Sold to the gardener for $50. Man shouted, in the back row. <laughs> now let's get on with the real bids. At this moment, <laughs> the auctioneer pounded the gavel and said, uh, walked away. started shouting. Auctioneer made his way back to the podium. All right. Said to the crowd, <laughs> I was told of a secret stipulation in the owner's will. But my instructions was that I was not allowed to reveal that stipulation until this time. And only the painting <laughs> of the sun would be auctioned. Yeah. Whoever <laughs> would come, whoever 
caught the painting of the sun would inherit the entire estate, including all the great works of the arts. You see, God so loved the world that some 2,000 years ago, he gave his only begotten son to die on an old rugged cross. And God's message to the day, God's message to the world today, take the son, yeah, take the son. If you take the son, uh, in the sun dwells the fullness of the Godhead. All right, all right. If you take the sun, you get the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see, I'm about to get happy here now. I heard the Son say, no man can get to the Father except he go through me. Heard him. Yes, I did. <laughs> Tell Philip. <laughs> you remember Philip, don't you? <laughs> Philip said to the son, <laughs> show us the father <laughs> and it will suffice. <laughs> and I heard <laughs> the God Almighty. <laughs> I heard <laughs> the son say, if you've seen me, <laughs> you've seen the father. Then I heard the son say, it's expedient that I go. I pray the father to send you a comforter, just like me, and it will suffice. Yeah, now he'll see if anybody may still have a question. Why are you so adamant, preacher? Why are you so persistent that we take the son? Well, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> tell them, uh, yeah, tell them uh, the son died a substitutionary death for you and me. In other words, the son took your place and your place and my place. And it happened one Friday <laughs> on a hill called Calvary. Yeah, they nailed him. Uh, to an old rugged cross. But I just stopped by this morning, Mount Moriah, new Mount Moriah, to remind you that it wasn't the nails that held him to the cross. He could have come down if he wanted to, but your soul and your soul would have still been lost. Yeah, it wasn't the nails that held him to the cross. But it was love that held him. I heard the son say, no greater love than this for a man to lay down his life for his friends. It was love that kept him on the cross because he hung from the sixth to the ninth hour. The S-U-N went down and the S-O-N went up because two suns couldn't shine at the same time. No, Bible says that he dropped his head in the locks of his shoulders and died. Yes, he did. They buried him in a bar or two. Did you hear what I'm saying? Say they took my rock. That's not where the story ends. Can I tell you the rest of the story? Three days later, my rock got up off of a rock and stepped up on a rock and declared all power, all power in heaven and earth is in my hands. I don't know about you, but I heard the son say, no man takes my life. I got the power to lay it down, and I got the power to take it up again. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, 
Where's your victory? You need to take the son because the son paid a ransom for you and you and you. And no one of the songwriter pinned these words. Jesus, I'm talking about the son now. Jesus, the barefoot Nazarene who loved wildflowers and little children. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe, sin to God Almighty. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed, didn't he do it? He washed it white as snow. This auction is over. Take the sun. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. God's name be praised this morning. The auction is over. If you will, stand to your feet. But the door of the church is open. The auction is over. But the door of the church is open. If you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Give me your hand, but give God your heart. Will there be one? Will there be one? The day will come when this auction is over. And as the elder said, take the son. Take him today. Take the son today. Will there be one? Will there be one? Will there be one? The Lord said, the day you hear my voice, the heart, not your heart, will there be one. Today is your day. Well, maybe you're here this morning and you're looking for a church home. As I said before, welcome home. We are church of everybody, somebody, but Jesus Christ is Lord. Will there be one this morning? like to come and join this body of believers. If you've been here this morning just in need of prayer, come to the altar. Let us pray with you this morning. If you're here this morning needing prayer, now is your opportunity. God's name be praised. You may be seated. He's worthy. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him. He is worthy, he is worthy. He is worthy too. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. It's all right to praise him, it's all right to praise him.
is also ordained to that, Mr. Ross. Ron Ross is the speaker this afternoon. Please join them if you are available. Uh, we want to continue to lift up our membership in prayer this morning. Sister Fu was taken to the hospital. Please keep her in your prayers, as well as my mother-in-law, Miss Marie Thomas. She is doing better. We thank God for you Amen. and for your prayers that God is continuing to strengthen her body. Uh, CYLC is held on July 18th to 21st. We ask your prayers for our young people as they travel down to Atlanta to participate um, in CYLC. Annual calendar tea will be held on fourth Sunday in July at three o'clock. Please join us as we continue to do God's work, God's way, and fellowship one with the other. Bible study is held on Tuesday at six. Uh, please join us. Reverend Burke is our teacher. She's teaching from the book of Hebrews on faith. In the world in which we live, we need to have faith. Amen. Amen. We need to learn to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Most importantly, we have also on Wednesdays, on Wednesdays at 7, we have our prayer line, our prayer call. Amen. We know that prayer changes things, and we're told to pray without ceasing. So let's continue the prayer and ask God to order our steps by his words. And those that are visiting today with us, we uh, give our offering as we depart the church. To my right, you will find the offering table. There is a box there for the offering just deposit as you leave and we also leave uh, everyone from the door to my right so as we're leaving we'll depart the same way the opposite we'll, we'll depart this way instead of going at the front door to ensure that there's a flow of traffic <coughs> and to remain safe amen? amen all right this time we're going to have our christian education department to come and make some presentations but once again let's give elder Rust a hand clap of praise for our God having a new sin.
want to thank everyone and Makitha, Makitha King, who put the um, presentation together. So we do have we do have a little token for our honor roll and our straight A's. If you would meet Ms. Lockley or Ms. Yolanda Jackson to the side. Um, they have your, your little stipend. We can't pay you for your grades, but we are so, so overwhelmed that you're doing well. So all of our young people, we want to recognize you for everything that you do. So um, now we're going to get ready to do our actual high school college graduates. So um, as I call your name, and I think the only female high school graduate that we have is Messiah Array Darby. <laughs> to speak, so is there something you want to say, where you want to go, what you're doing? Okay, um, now I'm going to Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas, and I'm double majoring in dance performance and human rights. Congratulations. I do see another one that's kind of looking at me, looking at you, looking at me. Ellis Xavier McSwain. <laughs> also known as EJ to everyone. So, Miss EJ, your plans? Uh, I plan on going to the Merchant Seaman School after uh, after the summer. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, so do we have a representative for Cameron Leviticus Hendon? Yeah. Would you like to speak on behalf of Cameron? Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, Cameron is not here today because he is currently already in college at FAMU for the yeah. summer. Uh, his uh, major is music industry with a minor in technology. I think. <laughs> and our next graduate, Christopher Cordell Calhoun the <laughs> second. I know he has representation if, even if I don't see him. Either, either or. Oh, come. Hmm. You know where you're going? Okay. All right, so this is a proud brother, little brother of the graduate. So, okay, you'll tell us where. Chris is going to go to Army West Point up in New York. Army West Point. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit taller than me. And now um, our other graduate, uh, Bernard Mobley. And I don't think he's here, BJ. Uh, but if you would come and take it for him. Yay, come on, Miss Bryant. Woo -hoo! <laughs> this her baby. And she's not shy. And she's very tall. <laughs> oh, B uh, BJ, he graduated from Palm Avenue, except in the school. He's a very smart accepting the student, and I am proud to be his foster grandparent. And if everyone will rise, you know, 
you, it's, it's, it's hard when you have to pull teeth um, to ask someone, have they done what they said they were doing? So if everyone would just rise and give an applause for the Reverend Sharif Abdul Rashad. For his masters. See what we have to deal with? Thank you very much for your prayers. Uh, it was a challenge, but thank God that I was able to get through it. Um, through it all, God can make things. We have a representative for Reverend Rashad coming up. I obtained my master's, master's of Theological Studies degree from Liberty University with a GPA of 3.5, I think it was. So thank you all very much for your prayers and your support. our church family and those of you that are going away whether you're going to college or you're going to merchant seamen don't forget to call on us let us know i remember when we were in college it was like i want you know i love getting letters i love getting mail care packages so we want to do that because we have our graduates and we have merchant seamen is not easy so i'm not sure Amen. if you get mail but we want we want to um, make sure you are not forgotten so we're not going to forget you we have rising seniors coming up next year and we have rising juniors so we have them coming um so everyone send prayers when you say your prayers at night to pray for our graduates and our high schoolers and our elementary babies and our middle schoolers because it's not easy and it was hard for them coming back after pandemic so y'all pray for their minds that they they say on jesus that they can get their grades again um the book that was given is all the places you'll go and so you will, the, the sky's the limit to where you want to go. Now, Pastor, you got something else, but um, it's a Dr. Seuss book as well. So thank you. Amen. If you will, let us please stand and give all our graduates and our uh, youth and a warm of applause for their academic achievements. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank you all very much. Maybe see seated. Let me recognize uh, Coach Moore of Flagger College Girls Basketball Team. Coach Moore, would you please stand, please? All right, thank you for joining us this morning, Coach Moore. So honesty, what are you, about 6'5 now? Not yet? OK, I was going to have you go down and see Coach Moore, but we're good, we're good. That's another one. Where, where is she? Don't put your head down. <laughs> All right, you're good. Get my hand. All right. <laughs> I always tease us too because they're taller than me on some Sundays. I have to, I have to keep my eye on them. Amen. But look around you this morning. Isn't this is a blessing? Let's look around the church here. What a blessing. What, what a blessing. We thank God for you. Uh, it is truly a blessing to have you in church with us this morning and our young people. Let us please pray for them. They have challenges we never dreamed of at the age of eight, nine, and 10 now. Young, young as we thank God for each of you joining us this morning. Praise, don't forget to see Sister Lockley for the text, correct? Uh, Yolanda. Yolanda, praise God from whom all blessings flow.
keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power. And all of God's people said, 